CataractCoach.com. My biometer showed differing astigmatism. What to do when each machine gives a different measurement? So first thing is, Pearl 1, look at the ocular surface. So you see that precise topography that's a really nice looking butterfly or figure of eight ring there of astigmatism. And now look in that bottom right corner, you can see the very clean reflection of those rings from the corneal surface. This is a nice clean corneal surface. But now, if you look at this other eye, look how irregular it is. You can't make anything of the topography because look at the bottom right corner. What irregular reflection of those rings. This patient has severe ocular surface issues that must be addressed before you do the cataract surgery. Don't even plan it yet. Now, much better, that same eye, look, after treating the dry eye syndrome, it looks a whole lot better. Now you can actually make out where is the astigmatism. So at this point, the reflection of the rings looks much nicer. And at this point, we can actually probably proceed with the cataract surgery. So this patient now is ready for surgery. It's not always possible to fix the cornea. So you need to set appropriate patient expectations much lower. And avoid treating the astigmatism. If it's so irregular, you can't make anything out of it. Don't do a toric lens or an LRI. So the patient's right eye looks pretty normal. The patient's left eye has a chronic Bell's palsy and an irregular cornea. Pearl tooth, beware of contact lens use. This patient looks pretty regular, 1.75 diopters of astigmatism, and those RGP contacts were out for 15 minutes. But look at the topography. It looks clean. Look at the reflection of the rings. It looks pretty good. It's a really clean axis. This should be easy, right? So, okay, let's do the calculations. So based on the initial biometry, we do the calculations, and it says, okay, we'll do a T4 toric lens. That's going to correct about a one and a half diopters or so of astigmatism. We do these calculations, and we're ready to book the surgery. And then you say, you know, let's retry this. Let's keep the contact lens out for a month or so. Now, same patient. Now the patient has 2.75 diopters of astigmatism with the RGP contacts out for a month. Wow, what a difference. You uncovered an entire extra diopter of astigmatism to treat. That's a huge difference. That's a lot more astigmatism. And so now we do the calculations. Now look, we're using a T6 toric lens. So that lens is going to correct about 2.5 diopters of astigmatism at the corneal plane. And I can tell you, the post-op result for this patient was spot on. This patient was thrilled and absolutely had a perfect outcome there. And thank goodness we took the contacts out. Pearl 3, it's easier with higher astigmatism. Look at that arrow. That's an eye with zero sill, a cornea with no sill. If you rotate it, nothing really happens, right? Because it's perfectly spherical. So if you look at the next one, that's a half diopter of astigmatism. And as we rotate it, you can tell it's bare. There is some sill that's a little bit out of round, right? And if you go to one diopter, now it's even more obvious to see. You know, now you know where the skirt circle has been squeezed. And one and a half diopters, look at that. It's so obvious now. So same with our topographers. If it's a high degree of astigmatism, it is so easy for the topographers and biometers to come up with an exact axis. This is the exact axis. But if it's a low amount of astigmatism, you kind of only know where's the astigmatism? What's the correct axis? So fortunately, for higher degrees of astigmatism, it's easier. Now, Pearl 3, it is easier, like I said, with higher astigmatism, but certain eyes, even in RK eyes, more than one diopter can still be consistent across the biometers. So let's RK cuts, four cut in one eye, six in the other, and look at the biometers. That's showing both the topography and the tomography of each eye, and they're dang near identical. So a higher degree of the cell is easier. And here's that same patient who had the RK cuts. Look at the post-op results. That's the actual autorefractor printout. That's pretty darn close. And of course, it's an RK patient, so it's perfect now, but in five or 10 years, they'll be back to a little bit of hyperopia. And you can see those toric lenses were certainly the right choice for this patient. Lower astigmatism varies more. So similar axis, but different magnitude of astigmatism. So here, one machine topographer says half diopter 167. The tomographer says 0.78. The keratometer on the lens star says 0.95. Well, luckily, you have all the same axis. So you can treat it, but go somewhere in the middle. So Pearl 4 is, when in doubt, undercorrect. You can always do another LRI post-op or even do LASIK or PRK. But don't overcorrect them. And sometimes people like keeping their sill. 
Here's another good trick you can do. Here's one phaco incision being made on the steep axis. In this case, that's probably about the 60 degree mark. And at the end of the case, the eye holes in the bag, let's make another axis incision there on that same axis. And this can treat about 0.5 to, to one diopter of astigmatism, depending on how you're doing it, the incision width and your nomogram. So using paired incisions is a very useful technique as well. And then finally here at the end, here's an LRI. This can be done certainly at the time of the cataract surgery on the OR table, but you can even do an LRI in the post-op period, in your clinic, or they can do it even at the slit lab. There are companies that sell specialized LRI blades that are very short, that have plenty of space to work at the slit lab. So in summary, my four pearls are, number one, look at the ocular surface. Number two, beware of contact lenses, especially RGPs. Number three, it's always easier with higher astigmatism. And number four, the most important, when in doubt, okay to undercorrect. Thank you for watching.